beasts and their riders are described in Revelation chapter 6, a white horse, a red horse, a black horse, and a pale horse. It is common practice to view these horses and their riders as representations of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These horsemen are said to be symbolic of conquest, war, famine, and death, respectively. The symbol of the white horse is the horse thought to be associated with the first event that will occur in the end of the age or start of the tribulation. It is common practice to interpret the white horse as a symbol of victory and conquest, and the rider of the white horse is frequently seen as the Antichrist. So they believe that the white horse and its rider are symbolic of the coming Antichrist, who will usher in an age of anarchy, and devastation just prior to the end of the age as we know it. The scriptures do not provide any information regarding the identity of the rider of the white horse. On the other hand, it is virtually certain that it will be the Antichrist who will appear on the white horse at the beginning of the tribulation. The first seal is broken at the beginning of the final tribulation, which will last for seven years and lead up to the second coming of Christ. In the context of battle, the bow is frequently interpreted as a symbol of power and authority because of its common use. When applied to the rider of the white horse, the bow can be interpreted as a symbol of the rider's military prowess as well as his capacity to subjugate others through the use of force. The white horse represents a Trojan horse, which is a person who poses as a savior but in reality, has evil destructive plans for planet Earth. You will not find a horse in the Bible that does not belong in the arena of combat very often. In point of fact, this is most likely the reason why people were perplexed when Jesus made his triumphal entry riding a donkey rather than a war horse. In the Bible, the color white is often used to symbolize something that is holy or innocent. Jesus is not like the first white horseman, in that he does not lie, and he speaks the truth. The second coming of Jesus sees him riding a white horse to conquer the world, the horses and riders of these two riders are strikingly similar to one another. Because Satan so frequently enjoys playing the role of the liar, it is imperative that we are aware of this fact. We can see very clearly in the book of Revelation that there are two different riders and horses that are used, and that they both have a white coat. And despite the fact that the rider of this white horse, who is depicted as wearing a crown, and like Jesus share many similarities. It is most likely that the rider of this white horse represents a false Christ of some kind. He pretends to be a man of peace and uses an empty bow, but his ultimate goal is to subjugate all of humanity and rule the world. At the end of this age, just like Christ will ride into judgment on a white horse, the Antichrist will also play a major role in the judicial process. The world as we know it is in disarray, and we are inching closer and closer to nuclear war and destruction. The majority of world governments are rotten to the core and don't take any responsibility of the people they rule over, and as a result, our economy and sense of order is collapsing. Fear and the anticipation of a global implosion are beginning to harden people's hearts. Soon, the leaders of the world will be searching for someone who will rescue them from the chaos, and this white horseman will have the answers. He will be looked upon as a savior of the world, and he will be equipped with everything necessary to make the world think he will make it a peaceful and well-ordered place. Satan is aware that he has only a limited amount of time left, and he is doing everything in his power to defeat Jesus on earth. But ultimately, Jesus will emerge victorious over the white horseman and establish his kingdom here on earth. This victory is frequently depicted in Revelation as the establishment of a new heaven and a new earth as well as the triumph of good over evil. Putting an end to the current age and ushering in a brand new age that will last forever, one that is characterized by peace and righteousness. Thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed this video, Please subscribe, like and share. To support this ministry, please go to gracetoprophecy.com.